Welcome everybody, my name is Anthony James, founder and CEO of linuxacademy.com and cloudassessments.com. And today we're joined by Jeremiah Cutting, who has recently achieved all five AWS certifications. And he's gonna tell us a little bit about himself and really some of his challenges, how he's using it in his career today, and really kind of help you be inspired on why you should get all five certified and where to start. So let's start off, Jeremiah, and just tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. So um, I have about 20, close to 20 years of experience uh, in IT, uh, mostly at the same uh, same company. Uh, about two, three years ago, our company started uh, moving services into, into AWS, into the cloud. And uh, that's kind of what inspired me to start getting uh, certified. So, you know, real quick on that, you guys have talked, you just mentioned that you were just about two to three years ago, decided to do that. I, I guess from an organizational standpoint, maybe even from a challenge standpoint, what kind of challenges did your organization face when they made that decision to go from, I, I'm assuming on-premises, to the cloud? And what made you choose AWS? So the, the, the move, you know, it, the, probably the biggest challenge is around um, the you know, intellectual property and security of, of our data, right? Um, and so that was a, I think it was always a big hurdle to move. I don't think it was ever a, uh, a technological issue. It was always, a, you know, more of a, um, an IP and, and security issue. Um, however, I think, you know, over time, the, you know, the market pressures and I think the, the, uh, perception of, of cloud, uh, changed. And I think that's what allowed that move to happen. And obviously, when you probably went through some of those certifications, obviously, we kind of learn as we go through them that the cloud can, in fact, if configured correctly, at times be more secure than an on-premises data center. Would you say that's a correct assumption? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, the, the, the services, the APIs that AWS exposes, you know, allows you to see what configurations are in place, probably more so than you have on-prem. Awesome. I, I appreciate you letting me pick your brain on the on, on your company's challenges on that. But let's kind of let's jump back over to where we are on the certification. So we have a lot of students and really kind of a lot of professionals as well that are looking to get really into AWS. Their companies are looking to make that similar type of change. And you're all five mm -hmm. AWS certified. Uh, you, there are the specialty certifications now, but the non-specialty there's five. I guess my mm -hmm. one of my first questions or another question would be. What kind of challenges did you face or what made you even decide to go for all five AWS certifications? Uh, yeah, so I, I guess uh, <laughs> I, I, I like to, to punish myself, I guess. I don't know. Um, it, it's, it, I would, went to uh, reInvent uh, mm -hmm. two years ago in 2015, and that was really you know, my first ex exposure to, to AWS. Um, I, I you know, read about it and, and had used it a little bit in the past, but... But uh, after going, um, you know, they made a, a pretty big deal about the certifications and I started learning about them. And, you know, I wanted to take this approach of I wanted to really learn uh, about cloud services in a way that, that I could say, you know, I, I, I could become an expert. Like, how would you do that? And kind of w what methodology would you follow? And the certifications I felt were, were a great way to do that. Like, if you're going to spend the time learning how to work work with the, the services and use them, you know, you might as well do those certifications as well. And they have a, it gives you a nice framework around what to learn and what to study. It does. There's that base level knowledge, right? So we, mm -hmm. all, we get a lot of questions a lot of times for specific or a lot of requests for specific courses on services. But why we like to do the certifications and obviously why you did is because the certifications, as you said, provide that framework. Once you have the knowledge at which the certifications expect, learning new things, keeping up with those services, you know, adapting that base level knowledge to apply it allows you to be able to think about how those cloud services work. So when you were studying, it's safe to say that you were focused not just on passing the exam, but you were focused on truly learning and getting in there hands-on. So how did you get that hands-on experience when you were going through your studies? Yeah, so, so you have you know, labs, right? I mean, the, you, you, know, you guys have labs and there's, there's other, other um, training labs available that you can mm -hmm. do. So I, I did that. There are, you know, Amazon itself publishes a tremendous number of, you know, 
how to's and blog posts and, and articles and quick starts and all those things that you can go through. Um, I mean, the, because the cost is so low, especially if you start with a free tier, you can just do a lot of these things yourself. You know, I mean, if you think about traditional IT, if you wanted to learn, you know, um, hand, get hands on experience with, say, like Cisco routing, you need a Cisco router to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and it's pretty expensive. But with, a, you know, AWS or in, in any of the cloud services, you can run pretty much whatever you want. You can run the same kinds of things that you would, you know, that an enterprise is running that you would run. You know, and, you know, in your professional career, you can get that practice yourself just because it's so, so inexpensive. Um, so, so that, you know, the labs and the how to's and those kinds of things, the walkthroughs are great. Um, and then also, you know, we were in that process of starting to, to move applications and services. So, you know, obviously there was the day to day actual work of doing that. Um, it gave me that hands on too. Absolutely. And so for those of you watching, if you aren't aware, AWS has more than just their primary blog. They actually have a lot of sub blogs for the different categories. So for example, there's a DevOps blog, there's a security blog. You can always, I think there's all the way down to cloud formation blogs. And so if you go do a search for that for AWS blogs, you get a lot of great information because it's actually coming from those architects that are building the AWS services. And so that is a really good way to stay up to date when trying to watch all the AWS announcements. I think they came out and said in 2016, they had over 700 what they called product feature releases, which is obviously more than one per day, and it's a lot to stay on top of. And so, you know, when you were studying for your certifications, what is your biggest challenge? It sounds like you decided to do it as part of your career, right? You, uh, you you'd mm -hmm. heard reInvent that the all five was kind of the way to go. What was your biggest challenge when just getting started and then really trying to convince yourself to go from one to five. Yeah, you know, the, the challenge is really just, um, you know, <laughs> actually continuing to commit the time. It's, it's the, the, the biggest cost you're going to incur doing this is, is the time cost. It's, it's a lot of hours of studying and going through materials. Um, and, you know, that, that's probably the hardest part is, is making that time commitment, I, I think. Absolutely. And, and sometimes it's, it's almost like that phrase, eat the frog, right? You know, when you're going to go for all five or even all nine now or however many after the specialty certifications, it's like eating an elephant. How are you going to eat an elephant? One bite mm -hmm. at a time. So you just have to get in there and get started. So for those who are trying to get in there and get started, which certification for AWS out of those five would you suggest mm -hmm. for them to start with and why? So I, I would say start with the um, architect associate exam. That gives you a, I mean, if you're not going to do any other certifications, that gives you a great introduction to, to AWS. Um, it's probably the most popular certification, so you will find the most materials out there to prepare for it. Um, though, I mean, now there's so much material out there. I mean, you could, you could really start with any of them, but I, I would say that's, that's the one I would start with. You know, I absolutely agree with you on that. And prior, part of the reason I agree with you is because one of the concepts of the cloud and AWS is high availability and scalability. And that's really what the AWS CSA focuses on architecting for high availability and scalability. And so I think what you'll probably see if you look at the public exam blueprints is that all of the other exams also have uh, the requirements of understanding the concepts of high availability and scalability. So really kind of going for that one will help you actually get a leg up preparing for the other ones so you won't actually have to spend as much time. So almost it's like compound interest once you get one and move on to the other. Yeah, yeah, no, that's absolutely right. I mean, there's so much overlap between what is covered on the exams. I mean, each, each exam has kind of its own perspective so it may be the same types of services that you're being tested on but the perspective is different say architect versus developer mm -hmm. but you know the materials definitely have a there's a lot of overlap and especially with architect and the other exams you know it's funny you say that because another way uh, that you're right on that is that the csa might focus on specific services around architecting those but the sysops might focus on the same type of services, but more focused around performance and bottlenecks and troubleshooting. So it is different on how they're there, but there's a lot of overlap. You still have to have the same base level knowledge for each of those services, which seems like it starts out at the CSA associate at the best for there. Mm -hmm. 
So when you were studying, it took you, you did all five certifications. How long did it take you to get your first certification and how long did it take you to get all five certifications? Yeah, so uh, I want to say I, it took, I probably spent a couple, maybe a month or so, maybe two months before I took the first exam. And then actually I took the, so I started with the GSA. Mm -hmm. uh, I took that and then probably within two weeks took developer and then within maybe a few weeks took uh, the SysOp exam. And then probably another couple of months until I took the uh, architect professional and then maybe another month or two until I did the uh, DevOps pro. Um, so, you know, probably about six months total to, to do all of them. Um, and a lot of that was just also like timing and, you know, like life getting in the way, but, Absolutely. you know, I think, I think you could definitely, when you start, there is a, uh, you know, you're, you're cramming a lot of information in your head. <laughs> so there is a half-life to how long you can retain all of that stuff, right? Especially when you're, you know, you've got to, you're trying to memorize things like, you know, all the different limits and, and what, what those, those values are. And, and I mean, there's just a lot of little details that, you know, you're going to need to pass the test and then be familiar with, but you're not necessarily going to have to retain that forever, right? So, so you have, I think, the longer you take, the harder it actually will will potentially become. I, I don't disagree with that. I think that's a, a great perspective of it. So, you know, on that note, which one would you say was the hardest exam for you? Um, I'd say the 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 architect professional was the hardest one. Um, I thought I, I actually thought that the DevOps exam was going to be more difficult because at the time there was far less material out there. Um, in terms of like prepared um, training, um, but I didn't think it was as difficult. It was the architect, architect professional, and actually uh, of of the three associate exams, I think SysOp is the the most difficult one as well. So Jeremiah, I would agree with you on all of that, one hundred percent, based off my own personal experiences. So it's funny that we kind of relate there. Um, mm -hmm. And so you know, I want to dive in. We're almost done here. I just want to dive in a little bit. You know, you did mention that you were using some of what you've learned inside of your day-to-day -day work now. So obviously your company probably values uh, the fact that you have all five AWS certifications. So tell me how that works a little bit and really maybe how you're using some of what you learned on a day-to-day -day basis. Sure. So, uh, you know, when, when I first started this, we did not have a... Um, a program in place to to do the to do the training and now now we actually do so there are you know a, a number of people um, that I work with that are now getting the certifications I actually think we have at least one other person now that has all five oh, great um, which is which is terrific mm -hmm. yeah um, and and day to day um, you know part of my work is still involved in managing on-prem you know traditional systems um, and and that same those same services though we're now running in AWS so we use things like you know EC2 Lambda Kinesis you know uh, CloudWatch CloudFormation all of those things so now that's great insights I appreciate you sharing that so you know as we close up here I just want to ask you one final question what advice would you give to anybody just generic advice that you would give to anybody whether they're already a professional inside of an environment or somebody who wants to get inside of the cloud field and IT field, what mm -hmm. advice would you give them? You know, so, so I would say uh, it, it's, there, there is such a low barrier to entry now. Um, you know, when I think about what, what it took to learn, you know, how, you know, how to do, do this kind of work, you know, even 10 years ago, um, you had to have either, you know, pay, you know, paid for training or you had to learn on the job or you had to, you know, you, the, the, the cost was pretty high. Yeah. And now uh, most of the material or most of the material you're going to be using is actually, you know, free and available to you online. The amount of resources that Amazon publishes is astonishing. You know, you don't have to go to reInvent. You can watch every single reInvent video you want, you know, on, on YouTube. They publish all that, right? 14 days even, after reInvent, they publish it. Yeah, this is it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I've thought it, it definitely it's worth going to reinvent. But if you can't, you can certainly watch all that material. And and even the 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 paid training is 
you know, so inexpensive compared to what you would pay to go to a, to an actual course. So, so the cost is extremely low. So I'd say, you know, what you have to do is just commit to it. Like, you know, like you were saying earlier and, and just get started. That's great advice, Jeremiah. I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you being a linuxacademy.com member and getting all five of your certifications with us. And so I look forward to celebrating your success with you. And students, if you're watching, take some of that advice and just the first thing to do is just get started. It's an elephant. All five certifications are an elephant. Start off with the AWS CSA and take one bite at a time. Just be patient, care about actually learning the material and you'll be successful just like Jeremiah. So Jeremiah, thanks for coming on. Thanks, appreciate it. That good? Yeah, you guys just keep doing what you're doing. Like I said, I mean, I, I uh, and I should have I should have actually made this point um, just a minute ago, but uh, you know, to me, this what you guys are doing is the future of of IT training, right? Like there is the traditional deliver materials in a classroom, that whole thing, like that. That's still even. Companies are, you know, and vendors are still doing that, like, amazes me that they can still get away with that and charge $2,000 to deliver a course, you know. Um, having the materials online and available and all that, like, that, I mean, it makes it so much easier for everyone. Um, it makes it available to so many more people. Like, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm.